Hey everybody and welcome. It is live with Colorado Beef and we are here in the Ace Barbecue Kitchen hanging out ready for an absolutely fantastic time tonight. Uh, my daughter Ella is the co-moderator this evening so she will be asking you all of your questions and asking me I guess all of your questions but first and foremost a big huge thank you to the Colorado uh, Beef Council for hosting tonight's live event. Uh, we really appreciate their support and the opportunity to work with them. And then as always, a big huge thanks to our Colorado ranchers and producers for growing and raising and producing some amazing Colorado beef. Now, if you are looking for Colorado beef and you're wondering how can I get some of that amazing Colorado beef in my fridge or in my freezer, you can head over to cobeef.com. It's Colorado Beef Council website, cobeef.com. There is a beef locator map. So you you can click on that. That'll tell you everyone in the state of Colorado who raises and produces beef and is ready for you to take some of that home. Ella, how are we doing over there? Good? Anyone we need to say hi to? All right, so we, we have a couple things going on tonight. We've got Facebook Live up on our phone, and we also have it live on the computer. So Ella is going to manage both of those lives and get all the questions answered. She looks perplexed. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Anybody we need to say hi to? Kim, Janet, good to see you. Ella's got a microphone on so you can hear her. All right, so tonight's recipe, we are talking about meatloaf. And, and I think meatloaf is one of those important recipes to go through because when you buy beef from a local producer, a local rancher, you're gonna get a lot of ground beef. And I shouldn't say a lot, but you're gonna get a good amount of ground beef. Uh, you'll get to pick your steaks, your roasts, your stew meat, your kebab meat. Uh, your cuts of meat that you want, and then the rest of it will be turned into ground beef. And I'll tell you, the nice thing about ground beef is you have a lot of different opportunities, whether it's in chilies, meatballs, whether you're making burgers, whether you're making meatloaf, there are so many different ways to utilize ground beef. We wanted to show you a fun way to use it tonight, but also because it's in the new year and we're thinking some of you may have gotten a air fryer for Christmas, I'll tell you, uh, I've been putting my air fryer to use and I've done some pretty wild things in there that I wouldn't have thought normally you could do. I did some Nashville hot fried chicken in there. I did some beef meatballs. Uh, I did some cool little uh, mini burgers or sliders. I did egg rolls. And tonight, as you can hear, you can hear that, right? That thing's running. We are making some meatloaf in our air fryer. Great thing, like I said, about the air fryers. It's such a cool, versatile cooking tool. And the beauty is I can make the meatloaf. I can put it on one of the air fryer trays. I can store it in my fridge, literally come home, get the air fryer preheated, load it in, hit the timer and go. We're talking about about 35 minutes of cook time today at 350 degrees. So we have got this set and running and cooking up a storm. Questions, anything we need to go through so far? Nothing? All right, I love it. So like I said, here is tonight's recipe. We are doing just a basic meatloaf recipe from uh, beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Uh, it's got a lot of good things in it, a lot of good seasonings in there. And I really like the glaze that we're gonna be putting on the meatloaf at the end. Uh, I grew up with a grandmother that loved that ketchup glaze on meatloaf, and we took ketchup glaze to the next level. We have a little bit of ketchup, some dry mustard, and some brown sugar as well. So. The beef we're going to be using today is 93.7, so we went with just a little bit leaner beef. Uh, I like that. I went with the leaner beef because, you know, as we get older, we want to shed a little bit of the fat in our diet. Uh, and because we're adding some egg in here, uh, we're going to make up for some of that. So I just went with a little bit leaner beef. Uh, I think it makes this exceptional. Uh, it makes it a little bit drier, a little bit firmer. And when I say dry, I don't mean dry in a bad way. It just keeps it nice and firm. Uh, but still maintains juicy and delicious. Our ingredients tonight, we're starting off with a pound and a half of beef. We've got uh, tomato sauce or ketchup. I swapped it out for ketchup today. We have one egg. I have a sweet yellow onion that we dice pretty fine. I've got a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm using those panko breadcrumbs tonight. I have salt and pepper. And then I also have a little bit of garlic. I have some dried herbs. So I did like an Italian herb blend a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. And then for the glaze, I have a little bit more ketchup, a little bit dry mustard, and a tablespoon, packed tablespoon of brown sugar. All right, so let's get in, dive in here, see what we've got. Ella will fire off questions as they come. I promise you can, it's a true story. What do you got back there, anything? Anybody we need to say hi to still? Laura, Paul, Holly, Charlene. I love it. Hello to everybody and welcome. Live with beef tonight. All right. 
Here is our bowl. We're going to add our pound and a half of ground beef to the bowl. One of the things I like to do is I like to go through and kind of flatten that ground beef out just like that. I like to flatten it kind of into the bottom of the bowl. We will add in our Worcestershire sauce and let that do its thing. We will add in those Italian herbs. We'll go ahead and add in our garlic. We're going to crack that one egg carefully, making sure we don't get any shells in there. Okay, we're going to add our onion. And you can, uh, if you want to omit the onions, absolutely go ahead and do that. Uh, I know sometimes people think onions and meatloaf is pretty strong. Go ahead and omit those if you don't want them in there. That is fine. We're going to add our ketchup or tomato sauce. Like I said, recipe calls for tomato sauce. We called an audible and we are doing a little bit of ketchup. Uh, just gives it a little bit of sweetness, right? Ketchup adds a little bit more flavor to it. And then we're going to go ahead and add our breadcrumbs. Now, when you mix this up initially, you're going to think, holy mackerel, that uh, is not enough breadcrumbs. This is not firm. Let it firm up. Those breadcrumbs are going to activate. They're going to absorb some of that moisture, and they're going to come out really nice. So I go in here, and I'm just kind of mixing and, and, and turning and mixing and turning. I'm trying to get all the breadcrumbs incorporated, the ketchup incorporated, the onions mixed in, and all of the seasonings as well. So if you have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the uh, comment section there. Miss Ella will do her uh, job of getting those questions over to me here. And then uh, if you're watching after we are live tonight, don't sweat it because we always go back and answer those questions for you. So we appreciate you and, uh, asking questions and leaving us your comments. So like I said, uh, if you're looking for more of our recipes and more videos, you can head over to cobeef.com, Colorado Beef Council website. That's going to be the place to go to get all of your beef content and knowledge. What do you got, Ella? Anything? All right. Let's go through, first of all, and grab a half sheet pan here. Kind of want to show you what we are doing with this meatloaf. All right. So we have the air fryer going already. Looks like we've got about 15 minutes left on that first batch of meatloaf, which is great because right, at, right when we get to that 10 minute mark, we're actually going to pull that meatloaf out and glaze it. Now, here's what we want to do with this first batch of meatloaf. You can see that's pretty firm. Uh, we let those breadcrumbs activate. That meatloaf got nice and firm. And what we're trying to do is make a um, loaf, right? A meat loaf. So I'm going to make this about 8, 10 inches long, about 4 inches wide here. I want to make it a little bit narrower a little bit longer so that it cooks faster and more even in the air fryer, okay? So we'll go ahead and leave that just like that. Now we will go ahead and get our gloves off. Put those off here. Put our dirty dishes in there. All right. Now, as this is sitting, we're going to let that sit and firm up a little bit more. We need to go ahead and mix our glaze. So... What we will do, I'm going to mix it into the other glaze I have here. Let's go through and take the extra ketchup that we had out of our recipe. Put that in a bowl. We're going to add the dry mustard. And we're going to add some brown sugar like that. So ketchup, brown sugar, and mustard. We'll mix all that in here, and that's going to become the meatloaf glaze. At the when, Like I said, when there's 10 minutes left in the cooking process... We're going to add that glaze in, but that, that is what that looks like there. Super easy to mix, and that'll add a nice burst of flavor to the outside of our meatloaf. Go ahead and clean this up. Questions or comments, my dear Ella? Yeah. Um, hold on. Is the ketchup a one-for-one one substitute? Yeah, that's a great question. Now, the question was, is the ketchup a one-for-one one substitute? And I feel like, yes, it is. Uh, tomato sauce is going to be a little bit weak in flavor because it's really just ground concentrated tomatoes. Uh, the ketchup is obviously going to be more flavorful, but I absolutely swapped it out one-for-one one, uh, because I like that rich ketchup flavor uh, in my meatloaf. So definitely a one-to-one. -one. Um, and what kind of air fryer is that? Uh, I'm just using it. I guess it's called Instant the Instapot, but it's the instant version. It's called the Vortex Plus. Uh, it's pretty cool. It has two, la two layers in it, or two levels in it. Uh, comes with a drip pan, comes with perforated uh, baking pans, maybe, if you will. It's super, super fun. It's been a blast 
to cook with. And it's a departure from what I normally cook with. You, most of you probably know I live my life cooking on grills. This is very, very different because uh, it really gives you great flavor. It cooks super fast. It's fun to always have in your house. Got anything else over there, bud? Nothing? All right. So the glaze is set. Our meatloaf is firming up just a little bit. And it looks like we are about one minute away from uh, glazing that meatloaf off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the other meatloaf in there while we glaze this meatloaf off so we can get everything kind of cooking. I wanted to have one done ahead of time so we could show you what that looked like. And then, you know, so Ella and I can have a little bit of dinner tonight, enjoy some meatloaf on a Tuesday night. Right, Ella? Ella's like, I'm leaving, Dad. When I'm done shooting this video, I'm going back to school. So, all right. All right, so we got our pan sitting here. Let's go ahead and open this. Uh, most air fryers, once you open the door, they will stop. So first things first, let's go ahead and grab this hot rack that we already have. And I want to be quick because I don't want to lose too much time in the air fryer. And I'm simply rolling that meatloaf off of the um, parchment paper onto the cooking rack here. And then what I'm going to do is carefully go back into my air fryer, like so. Now, here's the meatloaf we have been cooking already. And you can see, uh, let's flip that guy over. That doesn't look too bad, right? That looks absolutely wonderful. Now, once the, the meatloaf, the raw meatloaf is put in there, go ahead, like I said, preheat to 350, put it on for about 35 minutes. And then once you get to this point where you have, you know, five to 10 minutes left, go through, take a little bit of that glaze mixture that we put on in the bowl that we mixed up, I should say and just give that a nice coating on the top. Now, I'm not worried about it getting down the edges because as this glaze heats up, it is absolutely uh, going to run down the sides of this and get it where we want. Let's take a, uh, take a temperature check here too real quick and see where we are at. I would say we are, we're right about 95 degrees. So we wanna take this about 140 degrees or so, 145 degrees. Get that done, so let's get this out. Make sure that rack is not hot, it cooled off nicely. And we'll go ahead and put that back in there. So we'll go ahead and let that finish up for the remainder of its time. It looks like we're about yeah, 11 minutes left on that meatloaf. And then we have the other meatloaf in uh, the air fryer as well. Like I said, I love the air fryer because it's a very versatile cooking tool. If you want to cook uh, some minute steaks in your house or you want to make some burgers, that air fryer with the shells will do such a great job. Then if you ever have to take uh, your show on the road, so to speak, and you're doing an hors d'oeuvre party or appetizer party and you need to take something with you to cook, we've actually taken the air fryer, uh, air fryer to someone's house to fry off meat meatballs or to cook off meatballs that we were doing for a dinner party. We've also done some uh, Vietnamese egg rolls in there as well. So a very versatile cooking tool. It really fit into your uh, collection of cooking tools, I think, really nicely. Like I said, don't think of it just as meatloaf. Think of it as uh, other things as well. Got anything for me, Ella? Um, what, do you, what would you do with a day-old meatloaf? What would I do with day old meatloaf? Great question. How about uh, meatloaf sliders? Uh, you can easily reheat that meatloaf. Um, <laughs> Ella's, Ella's back here drooling because apparently she didn't eat today. So she wants, uh, they can hear you actually, Ella. <laughs> so she wants meatloaf sliders for dinner. The nice thing about meatloaf is cut them in a thin, in thin slices. You can reheat them in the microwave, cut it in half, top them with cheese, put them between some of those King's Hawaii iron buns. You have some really delicious meatloaf sliders. Uh, you could also reheat it, serve it on a pile of mashed potatoes with some sauteed mushrooms and brown gravy over the top. That would work out good, but I think there's lots of uses for leftover meatloaf. And some people would even joke like, how do you have leftover meatloaf? What is leftover meatloaf and how does that happen? But I'll tell you, meatloaf sliders are great. And then, like I said, on a pile of mashed potatoes with mushrooms and brown gravy, I am in a good, happy place. Any other questions, Miss Ella? Comments? Are they? Are you able to see what's on the computer too? Yeah. Any comments or questions there? No. All right, I love it. Okay, so like I said, let's just do a quick recap. We mix that meatloaf up. We uh, make sure make sure we work it until it is firm. Uh, that's when it's 
those breadcrumbs start to activate a little bit and they firm up that meatloaf. We used the leaner ground beef today. So we used a 93.7 ground beef just to keep it a little bit leaner. We didn't need all that extra fat in there. We added, got the egg to uh, add a little bit extra that we need in there, some of that good cholesterol as well. And then we saved some of the ketchup, a little bit of brown sugar and dry mustard to make our glaze for glazing the meatloaf at the end. Like I said, this is great. You could absolutely make this meatloaf today, put it on a plate and wrap it so that you're all ready for tomorrow. And tomorrow, when you come home, all you have to do is preheat that air fryer, load your meatloaf in there when it says add food, hit start, 35 minutes, and you should be in a really, really good place. And keep in mind, the thinner, smaller you make that meatloaf, uh, the quicker that will cook for you as well, uh, and you'll be in a very good place very soon. Like, uh, like we also mentioned, don't forget to head over to cobeef.com, Colorado Beef Council website. A lot of recipes there, a lot of great content for you. Uh, you can get a snapshot of what's going on in the beef industry in Colorado. And then also click on that beef locator map. That will show you where you can find Colorado beef um, for your fridge, for your belly. And I'll tell you what, we have a lot of great producers raising some exceptional beef here in Colorado. So uh, stay local, keep it local, and buy some of that beef then. When you do, you have a little bit extra ground beef, have some great ways to utilize some of that ground beef as well. All right, Ella, any questions? You like meatloaf? No. You don't like meatloaf? No. Ella, I've seen you eat meatloaf before and lots of meatloaf. What is with you? Questions on the screen? Mm, no. No, we're good? Mm -hmm. All right. Are you seeing, this is the first time we've actually done it this way. So are you seeing the same questions on both? Or are you seeing different? Different. Different? Okay, that's what I thought. Very cool. So we're always trying to do something different, have it be a little bit fun and exciting. Uh, so we'll go from there. All right, let's go ahead and take this meatloaf out of here quick. I have a couple minutes left, but I want to cut onto that end piece uh, and show you what that meatloaf looks like. It says we have about three minutes left here. So we'll pull it a little bit early so you can take a glance at it. One of the things too, when the meat Meatloaf is finished and coming out of your air fryer. Always make sure you, you use hot gloves uh, or oven proof or insulated gloves. And then definitely make sure that meatloaf rests before you cut into it. So when we cook it and those fats are warm, that meatloaf tends to be a little bit softer. Give it just a couple minutes, maybe two or three minutes to relax. Uh, and what's going to happen is that that meatloaf will firm up yet again uh, and come out, make it easier to slice all of that. Shelf life on meatloaf when it's done, I would say two days. Uh, you want to make sure you cool it in an open container till it's 100% cooled and then uh, cover it. My suggestion, if you have leftover meatloaf, cut it into your, into your pieces, your slices, if you will, and cool those on a plate. They'll cool down much, much faster and then cover them. Definitely looking at about two days of shelf life. Uh, and you can do a lot of fun things in there uh, to repurpose those during those two days as well. So, all right. That was. How many times you've had meatloaf at our house and you're all like, I don't like meatloaf. Crazy. That's what happens to me at high school kids, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's check this bad boy out here. Oof -da. It's a little bit warm. All right. So there's our meatloaf. We're going to let that guy sit here for just a minute and do its relaxing. But that's it. I mean, pretty simple, pretty easy. The beautiful thing is because we went leaner on this, we weren't putting a ton of fat into the air fryer, which means we're not smelling up the place, right? Your house isn't going to be filled with the smell of um, fat or cooking. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about the air fryers. Keeps a lot of that smell inside. It filters it on the way out. But because we went a little bit leaner on the meatloaf, we also didn't have um, a huge uh, assortment or a huge pool of fat, I should say, in the bottom. So let's go through here, cut into the end of this real quick. Yeah, we see, we still have a couple minutes to go, but if you see that, we are very, very close to done. Uh, we still, like I said, we still have a couple minutes to go. I wanted to pull it early just so you could see what it looks like, but I think had we left that for a couple minutes longer, we would be in a good place. Uh, and I'll tell you, Cook it to 145, 150 degrees. You'll be great. Uh, medium rare meatloaf's a little bit weird, right? We're probably sitting right about medium well right now. Uh, and then that glaze just smells fantastic. You have that uh, brown sugar in there, a little bit of ketchup, and you also have um, the uh, dry mustard in there as well. So questions, comments, Miss Ella? 
What do you got for me? Um, do you stick with beef or co a combination of meats? I stick with beef. I really do. Um, texturally, sometimes if you mix meats, uh, they can texturally be a little bit different. And that may make it taste uh, mushy sometimes. Uh, I, I know people will mix pork in there or mix sausage or mix uh, ground up bacon in there. I stick with beef. I'm kind of a purist when it comes to meatloaf and I like texturally every bite to be the same. I don't want to get a soft pocket of fat or pork or bacon or something. Uh, and then I, you know, I, I like that robust beef flavor uh, and I think it shines perfectly in something like a meatloaf. So I stick with just meat. Well, that's it. That's all we have. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Like I always say, thank you so much to the Colorado Beef Council for letting us have our monthly live events and for supporting those live events as well. Coming up March 22nd, we have another fun live event planned for you. Uh, and don't forget to uh, like it and share it. When you see the event post go up, please like it, share it, and RSVP to that. And then when we go live, don't forget to share as well. We've got a lot of cool things coming up for you. And as we get into grilling season, we're going to have fun things and lots of cool tips and advice on uh, ways to pick steaks, ways to have fun uh, grilling, different grilling cuts, so on and so forth. We'll keep you uh, dialed in and ready to go. Then don't forget, head over to cobeef.com, Colorado Beef Council website. Find all the information, get a snapshot of what's going on in the Colorado beef industry. And then also find the beef locator map where you will get Colorado beef uh, find the local producer that has Colorado beef for your fridge, for your freezer, and for your belly as well. Any last minute questions or comments? No. Nothing? All right. Well, thank you so much to my daughter, Ella, for being our co-moderator tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we will see you soon. Until then, it's uh, getting pretty close to meatloaf time in here. So cheers. <laughs>